Hey, what's happening YouTube and all my new subscribers? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great morning. I appreciate all you tuning in. And uh, I really want to uh, thank all of my subscribers who left such lovely comments on uh, the video I made about uh, my father. He was a big supporter in of what I've been doing um, and, and learning, you know, um, and I got nothing but very kind comments. And some of you subscribers I've actually, you know, become friends with through the internet. And some of you contacted me personally and gave me your condolences. And um, I want to thank you. I'm going to post up there were so many comments i'm just going to throw up all of the nice comments here uh, so everyone can read them and uh big thank you to all of you and uh since then um because i've been grieving um there's been a lot of new subs out of nowhere even though i've been doing nothing but posting a bunch of ridiculous shorts and that's just to sustain the channel um but new subs, uh, Kevin Rosenberg, new sub, Relaxing Mood. Ooh, I like that. Uh, new sub, Sunny Side Up. Hey, favorite type of eggs. Man, I like my yolk runny. Smear that through some uh, uh, tater tots and some beef. There you go. Uh, new subscriber, uh, Abet, Tania Mans. A Jinkya Pavikar, Scott Wills, and Fernando Keno. And if I pronounced anyone's name incorrectly, I'm so sorry. Um, I just looked at my Analyx, and I realized I have subscribers from all over the world. So, um, I I'm not the best at pronunciation. I, I actually don't even care if I pronounce half the stuff I talk about correctly. I just want to know if I'm doing it correctly. So, today we actually um, have a topic, and um, I'm going to continue making videos. Um, I was in such distress, I, I, I almost called it quits and deleted my entire uh, channel. Um, uh, it's been, um, been something else, uh, try, uh, trying to deal with the passing of a parent. Um, It reminded me of the time when I had a girlfriend that I really loved uh, when I was 16. She was like my third or fourth girlfriend, you know, at the time. But we were together for maybe six months to a year. And she dumped me, of course, for being a stupid teenager. You know, teenagers, you you lose relationships or whatever. She, dumped, she had dumped me. Um, I don't remember the reason, I'm sure, for being an idiot. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I felt the world was over. I, I Literally, I treated it for like six months. Like, my life was... It was doomsday. And now after experiencing the loss of a parent, you know, someone that you truly love and is supportive, supportive of you, I'd like to grab my 15-year-old self and be like, man, you know nothing. Stop whining about a girlfriend and get back to schoolwork. You know, so, um, yeah, it's hard for me to even talk right now and mention my dad's name without uh, wanting to tear up. You know, it's going to last a while. But anyway, so today uh, the topic is, is uh, a couple things. We're going to be talking about uh, substrate sustainability. Uh, sustainability uh, what has worked and what's made explosive growth and then a community tank and what that really means um, there's a huge misconception that community tank uh, for newbies means a diarrhea of all kinds of fish which is not true uh, you need to really understand your fish and uh, what parts of the world they come from uh, what types of environment they like, 
And um, if you're going to have animals from opposite sides of the globe, you need to know how to acclimate them to meet in the middle. Uh, so in a minute here, we're going to cut this video short. And we're going to go to my uh, schooling fish community tank. Uh, I have uh, three schooling fish uh, living in a huge community tank. Uh, one is Serpe tetras, which are one of the most aggressive tetras that you can have, which I accommodated them. It took a lot of work, but I figured it out. Uh, zebra danios and um, uh, glow light tetras. Uh, I actually have two kinds. I have the albino versions and the regular versions, which are amazing. And we're going to check them out and, and see how they work because you also need to understand if you're going to have um, a community tank uh, of schooling fish, which I prefer, uh, that, you know, these are fish that stick together. Um, they commute and do uh, things together as a group. Well, if you're going to have those types of fish and then decide you want another type of fish that are schooling fish, they almost need to be opposite. Otherwise, they'll be fighting for um, territory that they feel is theirs. Um, so I did a lot of research, and you always want to do a lot of research when it comes to um, schooling fish and community uh, fish in general. Um, so I needed to understand where uh, Sarpe tetras, um, you know, communate, you know, where they like to uh, thrive and live in waters. I needed to understand where zebra danios like to thri uh, thrive and live, you know, in water and their aggression. And I needed to understand how glow light. Uh, tetras uh, live and thrive and, and reproduce and all three of them are are different in their own way and when I cut to this we'll go back to the tank and I'll explain to you how I found this combination and how it works and why uh, so uh, I'm going to cut this now we'll go over there and we'll check it out all right, we're back, and uh, thank you for everyone having the patience to continue to watch. Uh, I know that was hard to watch, but it is what it is. Uh, but we're going to get to the uh, topic here. Uh, so I have three different types of community fish. Right here is a Sarpe Tetra, which are extremely aggressive. Um, right here, I like to call them zombie Tetras, which are actually... Um, albino glowfish tetras and let's find the actual glowfish tetras if we can all right so i needed to really understand um how sarpe tetras work because uh they are semi-aggressive um, along with tiger barbs in the schooling fish world. And I bought, um, oh, here we go. Here's a good look at a glow light tetra. Let's see if we can crank up the light on this. Oh, that's Max. All right, now glow light tetras are very docile, but they also like low light. So they will kind of congregate below. And I noticed when I got them that the Sarpe Tetras were picking on them a bunch. So I needed another schooling fish that would keep these Sarpe Tetras occupied. So I went with uh, Danios, uh, Zebra Danios. Zebra Danios, you know, they are so unique. Um, uh, they are one of a kind. They can hold their own. And they actually enjoy being... Um, pestered by fin nippers and fin nippers like sarpe tetras are not a good compatibility with live bears like uh with erratic or you know inconsistent schooling fish um you know yes they school but they also love um sporadic behavior and because of this, they keep the Sarpe Tetras 
who like to be a pie um, busy. And then the uh, glow light tetras, which actually have the most of them, but they're so... Ill oh, here we go. See, they're like clear with an orange. Uh, if you know like uh, neon tetras or cardinal tetras, they have a blue strip. Glow light tetras have a orange strip. Anyway, they like lower light and like to hang out below. So I needed to create a situation where they would, you know, not be bothered. Um, and Daniels were the perfect fit. It, um, actually, out of all of my tanks, if I were to decide that I needed a fish to distract another fish from harming others, it would be Daniels. Uh, so now, substrate. Uh, I have posted a lot of shorts of this, but this tank by far has been the most successful. And that's because I have used organic soil. I used sechum, red clay, and I used, um, ooh, glow light tetra. See how easily distracted I am? It's so ridiculous. Anyone who's watched my videos before know I'll get on a topic and then forget what, what I'm talking about. And I just don't have the patience to uh, correct it. Anyway, and then black blasting sand to cap it. Um, I do not have to fertilize this tank. All right. Um, I understand the ratio. If you have a densely planted aquarium like this, you don't ever have to gravel vac. These plants thrive off of the waste of your fish. Now... When we're talking about fish in general, and you were to like Google, how many fish can I have to a 20 gallon tank? Or how many fish can I have to a 30 gallon tank? You know, they're gonna say one inch size fish per gallon. You know, as a general rule. That's the rule with no plants. Now, when you're talking about a densely planted aquarium like this, uh, you can actually have a bit more and less maintenance. If you just have a gravel substrate, you got to do weekly water changes. When when it's uh, densely planted, as you see here, um, you don't have to do much. If, uh, like for me, when I do a water change, because water evaporated, so I'll suck a couple gallons out and replace it. Um, but besides that, it's a self-sustaining ecosystem. Uh, which is what I love about it, man. I want more close-up, man. I wish these... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Here's an albino. Albino glow light. See how sneaky they are? I have 13 of them, and I rarely see them, and that's just because they like to hide underneath everything else, which is perfect. Sarpe Tetris like to be a pie. And the Daniels, they get their jollies off making these dudes chase them. You know, it's hilarious. Um, I appreciate everyone watching. Um, I don't have much more. To, I, I really had to force this uh, video um, because I've been having a hard time. Um, but I wanted to get across some facts and some stuff that I've been learning. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time to learn. And by the way, out of all my tanks, the most sustainable substrate I've ever combined, black blasting sand, red sechum fluorite clay, and organic soil. <clears throat> the sechum clay, uh, literally does what I, uh, knew it would do. And that's retain all the waste and nutrients of fish and from the organic soil. It, it is almost everlasting. Except for the evaporation of water, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to gravel vac. There's so much iron in the clay that my um, ARs are bright red and I have more back there. You know, and uh, it's just, um, it's amazing and fun to watch. So thank you so much for watching. I hope all of you 
have a fantastic day. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you were able to comprehend and learn something out of the uh, erratic and scattered facts I was trying to give you guys. Uh, but I wanted to end on a note that um, I always say on uh, any of my videos, you know, at the end, because I, I've, I've, I've gone through some hard things in, in life and, you know, even the hardest recently. And if you're, if you're having a bad day, get up and do something about it. Never sit there and dwell on a wave of sadness or guilt or regret or any of that. Remember, waves work in, you know, patterns. They come and they go. And if you want to sit there and hang on to it, you know, it can kill you. Mentally. Or understand what it is and why it's there. And accept it and move on. And uh, thank you for bearing with me on this video. Um, I got choked up a couple times. And that's because I'm trying to train myself and to keep going. Uh, which is what my dad would have wanted. So, uh, thank you so much for everyone. I hope you have a fantastic day. Catch you next time.